Well, this could be the last explore that we do for quite some time. If you haven't heard or been living in a cave, the world's gripped with this China virus. People are dropping like flies all over the place. And the mission for tonight is to find the very, very mysterious cottage. What is it called? Towler's Bay? Towler's Bay Cottage. Uh, there's a lot of mystique about this place. You won't find too much information about it online, but it's set to be uh, written. It was the former Soviet Union safe house for a couple that was um, in Canberra in the 50s. They were seeking asylum here in Australia. And they were shit scared to go back to the Soviet Union. And they made a deal with the Australian government one of the three safe houses that uh, this couple stayed in, one is set to uh, be down here at Towler's Bay. Now we've had a look on the satellite map to see if we can find this thing, but all we can see is a whole bunch of new properties with uh, jetties right on the waterfront there. So we don't know whether or not we're going to be able to find it. It is raining a little bit. Uh, we're up here at our old playground at West Head we used to frequent this place when we were teenagers. Maverick's out with me tonight. And we'll be going down in light, hopefully taking some video and pictures and some drone footage of this place. And we'll be coming back up this track in darkness with our high-end torches. Now if we can't open the boom gate, because the boom gate closes at 8.30, we will be sleeping here for the night. We don't know what we're going to contend with on the way home. It'll probably take us about 40 to 45 minutes along this track and then once we get to the bottom near the Pitwater Youth Hostel that's where it gets a little bit challenging. This is off the grid this place. It's set to have an abandoned pool, an abandoned house, an abandoned caretaker's cottage and if it is low tide uh, you'll see the mud flats and there's an old jetty heading out to where water would be on a high tide. So all we can do is just follow this track. Fingers crossed we come, a, come a near this place because like I said, uh, Australia looks like they'll be going into compulsory lockdown in the coming days. So that's... Yeah, no, rain's coming in. Yeah, we're going to get very wet. So compulsory lockdown for Australia, which means only walking to and from the shops so there'll be no no more missions like this for quite some time it could be could be housed for four to six months so we better make this one a good one um, let's keep on going and once we get down the bottom if we do come across this place we'll start filming again okay we've been walking for about half an hour this is a long way down and we are absolutely saturated uh, we're starting the descent down now, so we must be getting pretty close to the youth hostel. But it's just constantly raining. Now, if we're locked in overnight, <laughs> we're going to be very, very wet in the car. Mav says we're going to call Jules. She's going to come and pick us up. We'll leave the car here overnight and get our way out of here. Because as it stands at the moment, my body is just wet from head to toe. I can only imagine what my backside looks like because these thongs are just flicking up dirt everywhere on my shorts and on my on my shirt. It is beautiful, I must admit, but would it be more beautiful if we had a thought of bringing rain jackets? I actually thought I heard on the news that there wasn't going to be any rain and as soon as Mavericks got in the car he says the rain set in. We have been walking for another 10 minutes. Things haven't changed. We are saturated but we're quite covered here from the treetops and we have come to the uh, first sign and the beauty about this sign is we know we're on the right path. 
So the track that we are on at the moment is Taylor's Towers Bay track. So we have to go up there. So that hopefully takes us past the youth hostel and you head on from there and it takes you to Towers Bay Cottage. And down here takes you down to the wharf. Lucky we did leave at the time we were going to leave because we might not have any daylight down there to actually take any footage. So surely and slowly we're getting there. About five, uh, five minutes on from when we took the last pictures there at the sign. If you are going to do this track, this is what you look for. It's a very small sign, but if you come to this little sign here that says Youth Hostel. Do I? Where? Look at that. Look at it. Look at nice. There's two of them. Is that one down there as well? Mm, no, that's one. Right. No, get it off me. No, get your knife. Cut it off. <laughs> Where's yeah. your knife? Get uh, your knife, Rambo. Hang on, hang on. Geez, that one's pretty good. I can't even get him off. Get off. Kind of will be freaking out right now. Is she? Look, he's on my finger. Mate, they love. There you go. What do you think it uh, means? Youth hostel. Are you saying it says youth, youth hostel? It just says YHO. Yeah, no, but yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, youth yeah. hostel. Yeah. Why? What? What do you think the uh, A for? Youth hostel Australia. Could be. Look at this little. A youth hostel association. Yeah, I think that's what it would be. Okay, so if you get to this point, I digress. If we get to this point here, you don't head up this track. You head down this track here. And this track should actually lead you straight to Towers Bay Cottage. From top to bottom, it's taken us near on an hour and we have reached our destination. We have reached what's known as Towers Bay Cottage. And let me tell you a little bit about this place. Back in the 50s, you had a guy called Vladimir Petrov. He was working for the Soviet Union consulate, I think, in Canberra. And it was said that he, if he would return back to Mother Russia, that he would be killed. So he struck up a deal with the Australian government that he'd seek asylum here. And this was one of the first safe houses that he was transferred to. Now his wife, if you actually Google the Petrov affair, you'll get a whole Wikipedia page on it. He's, he didn't tell his wife about this. His wife was at Sydney Airport in about 1952, 53. And you can see her being taken away by her will by a couple of uh, Soviet Union um, guards or whatnot. And they asked her, do you want to head back to Russia or do you want to stay in Australia? They were ready to stop these guys taking her away. Now through fear she didn't want to say no because she was scared that her family would get murdered back in Russia. So what they did, what the Menzies government did, he didn't like the way they were manhandling her so they flew up to Darwin, they stopped the plane, so she got on the actual plane in Sydney, stopped the plane up in Darwin and they made up some story whether or not um, they stopped the Russian guards or the Soviet Union guards through weapons or whatnot. So they took her away, they whisked her away from there and they reunited her back with her husband and this was the safe house that I read up that uh, these guys first went to down here at Towers Bay and from here they transferred to another safe house up in uh, George Street in Avalon and they lived for 18 months up at Palm Beach in another safe house but you can see how hidden this place is this place is just off the grid You've got an in-ground pool. Looks to be pretty well boarded up. Whether or not we can find a way in. No, you can walk straight in there. Oh, you can, can you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we'll, we'll get some snaps and video from all round, yeah. and then we'll light the torches up inside. That's a deep pool, Mav. I know. It's There's no shallow end. No. I die. I drown in here. Is that how they made, made pools back in the day? <laughs> wow. How slippery is this? Very slippery. Look at the size of that. Okay, so you've got a little 
shallow in there. Still, if I was to stand up there, my head would barely make it up on the tiles here. We've got those pesky berries. Which way should I go across? I don't think I can make it on here without falling. There's no stairs leading down into it either. Better be careful here because I've got so much gear on the back. All it takes is a torch to get hook on one of these branches and I'll fall in. Now there should also be an old wharf out there. The guy that tipped me off to this place said if you can manage to get down there in low tide you should be able to see the old wharf on the mud flats. So we'll head down there later. See if we can find the old wharf. It seems to be like an old rock pool down here. And there should be a caretaker's cottage somewhere as well. Someone's throwing a broom up there. Now the last place we went to a couple of weeks ago had two guys living in it. One guy decided to start flicking his knife around as we got there. He was a little bit scared, I think, of us. So we bought a little bit of um, defence tonight just in case we come across another hoarder, another uh, hermit in here. I wonder through heavy rainfall if this pool ever gets filled back up again. I'm still wondering how you get out. There's no stairs to actually walk out. There's no stairs for that beautiful lady, if she was in her swimming costume, to walk up the stairs and just, you know, show, see that sexy butt wiggling from side to side. How do you get out? Sexy Russian arm. A sexy Russian butt. How do you get out of here? Same way you got in. You just jump up on there. Where do you reckon this stairs lead to the wharf? Did you see any caretaker's cottage up there? Uh, no, it's, it's been up there. Okay, there's a, apparently there's a caretaker's cottage somewhere. So we've got to try to find that as well. Let's, um, let's head down to the mud flats. That's a pretty extravagant pool for its time. That's incredible, this pool. Even the house is incredible as well. So kids do come down here, a lot of graffiti. You got, you got a chair, someone looking out. Well, let's head down these stairs, Mavericks, and see if we can find the old wharf. Huh? Down the back there. We'll have a look after. Where it's dark up there, we'll use the torches. Considering we've got a little bit of light, we'll head down here and see what we can see. power box under there. So this leads you straight down to the mud flats, but I can't see any wharf. Oh, something just flew in my ear. I'd hate to look on the back of my calves. Surely I've got to have more leeches. Where's this wharf that he's talking about? I cannot see any wharf. Now it's definitely low tide. Oh. This is Towler's Bay. Maybe this is the old wharf here. There's not much left. Oh yeah, there's the jetty there. Let me see if I can walk over there without sinking. people over there in the house so this house is quite a distance away from all those other houses that people live in
So this is what my uh, friend must have been talking about. In high tide you would not be able to see this. There probably would have been something coming out here. You can see the retaining wall there. We'll just see if there's anything on the other side of here. If not, we'll go up and see if we can find that caretaker's cottage. We've gotten lucky. It hasn't rained all that much. Here we go, we've got another sign up here as well. So you can actually walk along the beach here. And there's a sign that actually says Towler's Bay Track. And there's a really old sign here that says something as well. Private Wharf. There you go. Private Wharf. We've got Lantani here. No admittance. Okay, so there's the old sign here. So this was the, the wharf for Towler's Bay Cottage here. Mavericks! Come and walk along the mudflats here, you've got to get some pictures of this old wharf. Now this um, house up here, back in the day, the government of the time compulsory acquired it from private hands, for whatever reason, I've got no idea, as I said, there's no information about that abandoned house at all online. And what was happening in the 70s and 80s, they were holding state conferences here. And in the early 80s, when Neville Rand was Premier of New South Wales, he used this place as his holiday home. Now you can only imagine what the people around these neck of the woods must have thought that the government, back whenever, acquired this home from private hands for whatever reason. It would have been a lot of homes, I gather, but this was one of them. And then decades on, you got Neville Wren probably conceiving Harriet up here. And then it was said to be a really bad look, and that stopped. And from there on in, since the 80s, this has been abandoned. Nothing has ever eventuated here. And look at it, it's just so, it's in dense scrub. You wouldn't even know it's there. And if you have a look on the satellite maps, you can barely make out the roof of it. But what a beautiful spot. You can, you can understand why the Petrovs were brought here back in the 50s for fear of them not being killed because this is, this is just off the grid. There's, what, there's, un, there's only one way here, really by the bush. So you probably would have had armed guards. ASIO, I think it was at the time, or whoever, whoever the... Uh, the Fed Police was, or whoever looks after the Embassy, would have looked after these guys from go to woe. Now the story on these guys are they were never heard of again, so they took up asylum in Australia. Um, Mrs Petrov died in 2002, and the Vlad, Vladimir died in the late 90s. They told the media back in the day, we don't want these guys hounded, we don't want these guys found, we don't want any stories on them. You know, we've given them asylum, they've given us the information that we needed on, on the Soviet Union. So they le led a very, very sheltered life for the rest of their lives. What a spot, huh? Yeah. Look how quiet it is. Isn't that amazing? I'd love to go, we'll have to come here again, maybe with the girls next time, and just walk, if we can uh, work out low tide again, yeah. and just walk up the mudflats there and see, beyond, beyond those trees, maybe that's where the caretaker's cottage is. I know definitely there's an old caretaker's cottage somewhere. It looked like there was a, um, I couldn't see through the bush, up the back of the, yep. just up the hill a little bit, there's a, I don't know, some, some sort of structure, it might be a water. Maybe, that, maybe that's what it is, yeah. That's but this is the wharf, isn't it? You seen the, did you take a picture of the sign? Uh, I'll tell us they truck over there. No, no, the sign actually says, um, private property wharf, don't, no admittance, no admittance. Let me come up here. All right, we'll, uh, we'll pause here now, and we'll head back up to the house. We'll get our torches out and we'll have a real good rummage through and see how many bedrooms this place had and we'll actually see what's in the house ok we're heading back up to the house now we're going to have a real good stalk around see if we can find that caretaker's cottage there's, funnily enough there's um, some garages a twin garage here 
Now we thought it might have been for the boat. I doubt you'd be able to get a boat up here, so... No way. No. Uh, maybe they, they built the house thinking that there will be a road built here at some point in time. But how you'd get a car down here, I've got no idea. Yep. Down here, yeah. Should have had to come by Should have had to come by boat on that walk there. Oh, I think it's long before that. They acquired this. They, 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 this was a safe house in the 50s. That, that's what was going on with, with those guys in the 50s. Did you see anything there? Yeah. Hang on, I'll pull the torch out and I'll light her up. Come down and light it up down here. Water tank. Yeah, it's a water tank. Don't know. There's no caretaker's cottage that I can see. You want to jump in, see what it's like? See if it's septic? Okay, I doubt the caretaker's cottage would be this far up. Nothing that I can see. Better just make sure so we don't miss anything. There is a truck heading back down here again, so we'll head down here. The Petrov Affair. So if you're interested to find out about the couple that sought asylum in Australia just Wikipedia the Petrova Fair and you'll see Mrs Petrova being manhandled at uh, Sydney Airport I think it was and like I was saying before they asked her if she wanted to remain in Australia but through fear that her family might be killed back in the Soviet Union she unwillingly went on the plane and Sir Robert Menzies didn't like 
how it all went down. He didn't like how it was handled. And whether or not that plane had to stop at Darwin to fuel, or whether or not they made an excuse that it needs to stop up there, that's where she was grabbed and reunited with her husband. Look at these stairs also. And this was the place that they were brought to. Can you only imagine how beautiful this home would have been back then? Where are you, Mavericks? I think Mav's already inside. He couldn't wait. Alright, you've got three water tanks here. Maybe the caretaker's cottage is down there a little bit. Are you inside? I've lost Mav. Someone's taken him. Towers Bay Cottage, home of Morning Bay Bush Regeneration Group. Volunteers welcome to join local residents. Triple nine seven two six five nine or triple double nine seven nine sixty three nine. Okay, we've got a quick battery change. Map's keeping rather quiet. I think I'm going to find him somewhere hiding. We've got a hidden room here. Oh no, that's the door to go outside. So it must have been used for something after, because you've got an exit sign here. What a beautiful view these windows would have presented. Have a nice heater set up in here. You've got the kitchen. Look how old those windows are. Looks like a single uh, chair. I can hear you, Matthias. Have you been upstairs? No, I don't think it's him. Well, you've still got everything in here. Merry Christmas. Liquid soap. Maybe a rat poison. An old stove. Those glass cabinets were very popular back in the day. Time has stopped on 9.46. Someone's dismantled the fridge. Someone doesn't want you going out behind the fridge here. Looks like I'm going to get up on top. Alright, the roof's leaking. Someone saving water. Looks like an ice sweet. My goodness, we've got toilet paper. We've got heaps of toilet paper. For all those people that were queuing for dunny paper. You had three rolls, three rolls here. What's in here? En suite. Tell you what, I haven't heard from Matt for a while. I'm starting to worry now. Looks like there's been a fire here, okay. 
So you can see the roof is collapsing. It won't be long before this uh, house falls in on itself. Alright, we're going upstairs. Map's having a break somewhere, unless he's been murdered. Careful, I don't fall through the fucking floor. And if you're a fugitive, you could live out here. The little cupboard up the top there, triangular shape. Common practice of kids. Kicking the walls in, pretending they're Van Dam. Where's Mavericks? Permarest, permaslat. You know what? I'm going to have to go find Matt because it's not like him to not say something for this length of time. Unless he's come across the caretaker's cottage somewhere and he's sussing it out. I'm surprised why he's not taking pictures here. Hey, Mav? Where the fuck is he? Mav! You're light up, you're Yeah, let's go. Alright, we finally found Mavericks. So about you head on in? Oh, you can take some pictures. You tell me what to aim it to and I'll aim it. Do it towards those stairs there. It's got emergency exit lights too. So I know. Been, uh, so it must have been used for something else. I noticed the emergency exit light in here. Have a look. It must have been used for something else back in the day. Oh, no, this is the little, uh, this is where the pool table goes. Yeah. This is a little rumpus room. I've got to get one to walk into. Oh, the bar? Yeah, the bar. Oh, yeah. Bar, you know what I found in the dunny? Three rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Just, just turn around and up from that door. Where? Back into that room. Oh, in this one? Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Alright. Let's watch this glass. It's one in the kitchen. In the kitchen, yeah. Let me come over here. Have a look at this uh, stove that stopped on 946. Then we've got this one here. That doesn't look all that old, that stove. Someone must have been using it afterwards. Dynasty. The Dynasty. Had a fire blanket as well. Open these uh, cupboards. Yeah, they're all... Um, That's new. Yeah, modern breakers. Yeah. Open these cupboards down here, see what there is. Sponges, plenty of sponges. Asia. Hot water system. Hot water system. Wrench a kill. Veggie oil. Nothing really stuff. old. Old Merry Christmas cups. What are those things in the corner? 
Uh, lids for takeaway containers. Oh, takeaway containers. The sunbeam toast crumpets. Toast and crumpets. The old grey. Have a go through here. I think my mum's got one of those. Yeah, open these covers. See if we can find any human remains. I thought I might find some down that bush. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. Oh, there's something in the stove. Open the stove. Does it open up? There you go. Oh, the handle's missing. Down the bottom? No. Oh, water down here. It's like a little pantry, walk-in pantry. What about a pantry? Yeah, look at that. I can't get in there. Oh, they've got some old uh, globes. Gee, you're lighting globes. Oh, get in. Alarm system. Open the door. Can't. They've screwed, oh, screwed it closed. Screwed it closed. Close. All right, jump on over the... Um, where's the garage again? Well, we're heading down towards it now, I think. Oh. That's the front door. Oh, yeah, that's the front door. Oh, careful. Yeah. It's on top of this. Yeah. No, I went over this before. Oh, washing machine's full of water. Yeah. I opened oh, that thing that open before. <laughs> A nice leg, you'll see the roof caving in in a sec. See the dunny rods? Yeah. And that's a tight squeeze, isn't it? As big as the house is, all the rooms are, are kind of small. Yeah, and there is a doorway. Yeah, I know. Must have been small people. Where do you reckon the... Uh, See, this just comes to an end here. Strange. Walk-in wardrobe, yeah? There's been no uh, internal access from the park in the garage when you come this way. Now look, look up the top there. That's new. Look at the Besser blocks up there. The Those best, the Besser blocks. That's new. That's not back from whenever this was built. Someone's put an extension on. Maybe this is an extension compared to the what the original house used to be. The original house, I bet you, was just that stone. I kept, kept the light there. The lights up this room. Is that a colour? Yeah. This would have been a beautiful room looking out to the water. Oh, yeah. It'd been fantastic. Oh, okay, back through the other side. Yeah, no, head up the stairs now. Yeah, just like, just like that. Back down through there. Keep coming in. Yeah, that's it. Is that? Yeah, it's all that. Right, head up the stairs and we'll take a few snaps up there and then we'll make you an hour trip back up in the darkness. That'd be a nice trip. Yeah. You don't want these stairs. You don't? No. Why? No, they just don't feel solid. <laughs> Mate, I thought you were hiding up here when I came up here before by myself. I'm thinking, where are you going to come out from? I honestly thought it's something happened here because it's not often that I yell out to you and you don't say anything. I, I, I scared. You smell it. It's disgusting. Couldn't hear you yelling out. Man, you're getting the roof. Tied a body up there as well. That's unbelievable. Left all the furniture behind. Right up the stairs. Yeah. Why do people do that? Honestly, it's for kids. You keep the shit out of stuff. The kids. Do you want to get in that corner and and shoot back this way? If I aim it up like that, can you? Is that okay? Yeah. Nice. Shag pole carpet. I remember this is my uncle's and auntie's house with green, green stuff in here. Yeah, no. Better get behind you. Mm. Yeah, we'll pause down here and then we'll take some more downstairs. 